Radio Raheem with Anthony Joshua. You know, before you did the walk into the arena, coming from the locker room, I heard violin music, and it was the Godfather waltz. I don't think anyone was expecting that. The whole stadium was a hush. What does this violin uh, mean to you? Something that you wouldn't understand. <laughs> but it's... Um it's a way of life. I like the, the family aspect of the Godfather. I like the code. La Costa Nostra. Obviously, it's like a criminal organization, but take that away. Family, code of conduct, look after the community. I really like, uh, yeah, the, that thing of theirs. I do, I like it a lot. So, yeah, the Godfather is something that I've been watching this week as well. I watched uh, one and two. I need to watch number three. And there's one more thing I need to watch, um, like the sequel of what... Yeah, anyway, I just love The Godfather. It feels like you're in a completely different headspace than when I've been covering you in recent years. Yeah. Like, how have you changed over the course of uh, having experienced all these things in the last, say, three years? Um, like, you, you shed skin and you grow thicker skin. I think that's what goes on in life. For experiences, not in a bad way, but you kind of get tougher mentally, and that's what experience gives you. And I can't wait for the day that I pass it on. So I've become very experienced, more matured in my approach to things in life. And that's why I said I've shed like old skin and I've got like tougher skin due to my experiences. Having had experiences that other fighters haven't had and now being in a gym with Derek James at top level, other fighters in there with you, Obviously, Errol Spence experienced something for the first time that he had never experienced before. Uh, do you have a chance to speak to him after his loss to Crawford? You know, I think it's important. No, I haven't because he's, he's with his family. Um, the thing is, I try to focus on his success, all the success he's had in his career. I don't try to highlight this one loss as what Errol Spence is. The guy's had a fruitful, amazing career and... Um, just hold your head high. That's what it's about. What do they say? Keep your head high like a nosebleed. <laughs> yeah, like credit to him, man. He's had a really, really good career in a tough, tough division. And um, both of them stepped up and made boxing great. I think they've done a great job of bringing boxing to the forefront. And we all benefit off of it at the end of the day. So credit to them both. From your first loss, you had to reconstitute, get confidence back, go to Saudi and, and get that victory. Knowing... Yeah. Knowing yeah. what Spence is going through now, what would be your advice to him if you could speak to him? I don't know, because I would say, you know, don't do the same thing. But then I'd done something completely different. And people were like, oh, my God, he's scared. He don't want it. But I was like, if you lost one way, you do something completely different. You flip the script. And I took away a lot of uh, Ruiz's attributes. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'll just say, listen, flip the script and do something completely unpredictable that will nullify Crawford. Um, but who am I? I'm not his coach, but I'll just be my, my humble advice is do something completely different to, to nullify all his advances and you could be victorious. But I believe um, it'll, if they rematch, it'll be a really good fight. Credit to both of them. Does that bother you? Like you just said, people are like, oh, uh, yeah, is, he, is he scared now because he's fighting different or it's taken longer to get the knockout? This is seven rounds and so-and-so did it in one or it should have been three. Uh, does it feel like in, in a way like with certain fans and critics you, you can't win? Um, I've won already. Yeah. Critics can never tell me or advise me on what winning looks like. I think I've done that already. So... Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not too caught up in, in opinions of, of critics. I just have to take the opinion of my coach, man. You know, you have to, you have to block out the noise. Stay in your lane. You know. Is there a difference in the way American coaches train fighters? You've, had, you've come up in the British way for so long. You've crossed the pond now. You're in an environment with a very... I don't, I, I, to be fair, there is. There definitely is. There definitely is. But not all, not all American coaches, I, I would say. I think, and not all British coaches. I think there's some British coaches that are on the same level as American coaches. But as, as England is so much smaller, mm. it's definitely harder to, to find the right coach that suits your style because every coach has a different philosophy whereas in America you've got what's it 51 states 
50. 50 states. I think they say 50, the 51st state is. <laughs> We're going to get into the Mandela effect right now. <laughs> so many people think it's 51 or 52. It's actually 50 states. <laughs> they say it's 50 states. You know, that's why that America has so much more style. So people tend to go there to try and search for a coach that fits their style. But yeah, America's been good in terms of like progress, definitely. And I'd advise any young fighter to travel wherever it's uh, Eastern Bloc, Cuba, whether it's um, America, great British fighters should travel and definitely learn from, from other coaches. I like to talk about the culture of boxing is, is what may be different about American uh, trainers, in particular Derek James. Obviously he's a you know, black trainer, he's in the South, he's got a stable and they're kind of known for a certain kind of rhythm, uh, a style there that uh, I haven't really seen in, in British fighters. Do you find that to be true? Uh, you have to have the rhythm in yourself. Mm. I think that's important. Because what, what I've noticed about coaches is whatever style you you have, they'll work with you. But you have to be confident enough that that style's going to work for you. So you have to have that rhythm yourself. A coach can't... If, if you're Bobber and Weaver, a coach won't change you and make you a stand-up European-style boxer. The rhythm that you have is the rhythm that you bring and your coach will just try and develop that. So I don't put it down to the coach to bring that rhythm out of you. I put it down to the athlete to be smart enough to know how to find their own rhythm. A good coach will just help you bring it out of you. You don't want to doctrinate the athlete so much that they lose their natural instinct and their natural flair. Kind of like that Prince Nassim effect, right? I'm talking about extreme, but he had such rhythm, such flair, you don't want to change. So yeah, you need that. You need someone that's going to bring the best out of you, not change you. You've talked about Canelo being your favorite fighter, and Terence Crawford with this win over Spence is now yeah, most people's fighting, uh, catch <laughs> top pound for pound number one. He's even called out Canelo. Uh, how would you see that else, right? matchup happening if it were to take place? What in terms of who wins and who loses? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let's get a rematch on with uh, Errol first. Really, you think Errol could uh, win the rematch? Maybe a fifty-four. They should get it on, man. They should get it on. I think it'll be a good rematch. I think you get a chance, a second chance to prove yourself. So, yeah, I think, I think it'll be good. But I can't tell. I don't know what he'll do. But I just think if you've got a second chance, he can. Uh, it'll be good for both of them. It'll be massive. It'll be bigger than the first one. Who's your number one pound for pound? Save the heavyweights. Who's the number one pound for pound? Who's the number one pound for pound? What, in current boxers? Yeah. Who do you reckon, Maurice? Let's talk boxing. Your question. I don't know, but I don't know. Okay, uh, what's your question? I can't call Yeah. Give me the list. Give me the top five. I mean, there's Inoue, Crawford, obviously. Canelo still has to be in the conversation. Uh, you know, I mean, those are the top three that most people are debating. Yeah. Crawford then. And lastly, uh, you know, you've said and Eddie said that you only had three fights left. It, it's Wilder and it's Fury. Oh, who said that, Eddie? Eddie said that. Oh, that's okay. Everyone knows what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> 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 Let me ask him what time I should sleep tonight as well. <laughs> so it's, it's, I didn't know that. I didn't know I had three fights left. This being the first of the three. That's so that's news to me. So that's not your intention then? I, I won't reveal my intention until it's time to reveal it. But I, people, uh, Eddie, I, I know, I, not in a bad way, but there's always speculation. I'm just going to do what's right for me. And then all I want to do is get back to training camp and build on where we left off because um, I need to get better. I just need to keep on improving. I know Undisputed is still the goal for you. It would be for any heavyweight. Uh, you've seen Fury now taking the Nganu fight. You had the opportunity to maybe make some big money, take uh, exhibition fights and do these kind of things. Why have you chosen otherwise? And does it disappoint you at all that there still isn't an Undisputed heavyweight champion? No, nah, people, people can do what they like in their life. They know what's right for them. There will be an Undisputed heavyweight champion at some point. But maybe just not now or in the next year or so but we can't we can't cry over spilt milk what's right for them is what we have to support we can't always look at other people's decision and think oh i'm upset because it doesn't suit what i think is right 
Mm-hmm. If he's happy with what he's doing, let him do what he's doing. And um, the undisputed heavyweight championship will find its way to the forefront of the heavyweight division at the right time. But currently, it's just not the right time. And the current heavyweight champion feels that he wants to up find something else better than the undisputed. May not be right for me, but it's right for him. And I've got to support him in what he does. Do you feel that there is a media agenda, as Eddie Hearn has said on Talk Sport, against you, against him? Not against, no, it's not against. It's like, it's just a hot topic. It's always like an ongoing conversation. Sometimes when you have a conversation, sometimes you draw a line under the sand and say, you know, a good conversation. And that's, that's what it is. It's just an ongoing topic. So, um, but not an agenda. No, I don't. An agenda is kind of like, this is what we want to do. We want to attack this person for this, this. But it's just like a... But it's, look, it's clickbait. It's, it's probably doing big numbers, talking about Eddie consistently. So it's, it's business as well, right? People don't see it as that. So it's good business for the, for the radio station. So I understand it as well. But um, it, it needs to do more good for boxing than bad. It's mm. like a lot of back and forth and let's pull each other down. You know, boxing is a great sport. There was a time when boxing was a gentleman's sport, you know. Um, but the radio stations seem to be pulling each other down in the sport when we need to all come together and lift boxing up to reach its full potential, in my opinion. But who am I? When you're done, whenever that is, what is the mark that Anthony Joshua wants to leave? Not on just boxing, British boxing. Nothing. Nothing. I don't, no, I don't really... <laughs> Do you think I want to leave a mark on for? I don't really. <laughs> Come on, bro. What do, what do I want to leave a mark on this for? Bro, I just came in this game to get. I just started joining the boxing gym to get fit. I used to smoke. <laughs> I just started. I just went to the gym to stop smoking and get strong. And now I'm under all this pressure. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I don't have no. Honestly, I don't have no expectation. I'm just gonna do my best, work hard, until I can't work hard no more, and that's it. Honestly, that that is it. No expectation. Um, remember, what, why I say that? Because there's been many, many a great fighters that have come before me that don't get remembered. So I'm not going to try and have an expectation of what British boxing or boxing should mean to me or the regards it should hold me in. Because imagine you don't get the respect that you deserve. It will eat you up. So I just kind of say, I'm I'm not expecting anything. I'm just happy like that I, that I personally given it my best and... Yeah, I don't expect anything from boxing at all. Well, let me give you the respect you deserve because oh, you, man. I, I wouldn't be covering that. British boxing if it weren't for you. For you real? definitely made your mark already. You've made it a global that's, uh, sport yeah, that's like, for that's, me. And per, like personally, I can say that that's the reason I'm here covering yeah, British boxing. Like, I'm not, but then that's what I'm, I'm not searching for it, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you, and I appreciate the time as always. You, Radio Raheem with Anthony Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man, bro.